everybody. Gina DeLuca here. All right. I have a big canvas here today. This is a 20 by 24 and I am going to be attempting something crazy. <laughs> uh, I want to try to make this look like uh, a woman made of water, like coming out of the water. We'll see what happens. So the colors I have are Liquitex Basics and Phthalo Blue. I have some uh, Dioxazine Purple in the Liquitex Basics and Titanium White. Uh, some titanium white will wind up in there I'm sure the first thing I'm gonna do is uh, lay down this base coat which will be the phthalo blue So I did paint the sides a bit. Uh, phthalo blue is fairly transparent when it is mixed for fluid acrylics. So I wanted to make sure that I had some extra coverage on the sides. Also, this is a deep edge canvas, so even more reason to do the extra mile. All right, so I've mixed up a, a slightly lighter shade of blue so that I can try to sketch out uh, what I'll be doing. Wish me luck. <laughs> Okay, I have flipped it over so you can see it upright. Uh, doing the head, you will notice when you're drawing a head, it is not round, it is not oval, it is shaped more like an egg. More uh, like wider on top. And then the chin is like the bottom of the egg. One of the uh, challenges of working with fluid acrylics on something like this, particularly on a big canvas, uh, it throws your perspective off a bit. If, if you've ever done drawing and you've worked on a flat surface, on a big piece, then, uh, you know, you have a tendency to stretch things or shorten things depending on how far away it is from you because that's how your eye perceives it. Some artists use this to their advantage. Uh, for instance, um, the statue of David, the head on David is not to scale with the rest of the body. It's actually much bigger, but it is meant to be viewed from below so that it has a uh, overwhelming effect. It's so big. It really is. Like when you see it in person, you're, you know, it's surprising how big it is and his feet are just below eye level and so when you're looking at David when you're standing below the head looks like it's to scale but if you were to actually look at a picture of it it's uh like from from straight on the higher up it goes the bigger it is so that the, per the perspective is uh, proper for the viewer. So that being said, um, 
I was having a little bit of issues with her arm because it's closer to me. And so I kept making it shorter than it should have been. And I had to keep going back and fixing that. Uh, it's hard to get on top of a canvas this big so that you can really see it properly, the perspective of it. So that being said, you know, I'm laying in the, the, um, kind of the mid-tone to get my shapes together. And then, as with the splashes, I'm adding highlights and shadows to give it more depth. And I wanted it to appear that she was made of water and just forming and um, I wanted her to be looking back at the water and if I could manage to get some kind of expression on her face, which, you know, when you're working with wet on wet, it's difficult because you're basically pulling paint and pushing it um, to get it to move. It's not like a brush where it, wherever you put it is where it is. It, sometimes you have to manipulate it by pushing it around. So again, looks like I'm adding more shadows, trying to create some depth. One of the things um, I've noticed when trying to create water uh, I will often come in and smooth things out after I've laid in the lights and the dark so that they blend a little better. Uh, it gives a more natural, watery appearance as opposed to harsh lines. But sometimes, particularly with highlights, you want them to be a little more harsh. You want them to pop. So with this painting, uh, my, <laughs> my phone died, because uh, I record on my phone, um, at the two hour and 30 minute mark. I did work for a few more minutes after that, maybe like 10 minutes, eh, probably not that much, where I, I laid in some more highlights uh, and uh, I'm sorry I didn't get that on camera. These, these longer pieces are difficult because my, my battery uh, gets chewed up pretty quickly. Well, quickly. I mean, two and a half hours. That's pretty good. But uh, my, the clip that I have to hold my phone does not allow me to charge while it's um, being used. So... I may have to find a different way to hold this phone if I'm going to be doing paintings like this. Uh, so I added in some in the, in the sky. Uh, it was a mix of the dioxazine purple and that phthalo blue. Wanted to put some depth in there uh, to give it, you know, the appearance that there are some clouds in the sky and again coming in with highlights it's really when when I start adding highlights that uh these water paintings really start to come to life. It is pretty difficult to make a shape of something that you should recognize. 
such as a person, with water because water uh, is typically smooth and you wind up, it can look like texture up close, but this isn't really meant to be viewed up close. I mean, it's like, by no means am I comparing myself to Monet. <laughs> but if you look at a Monet painting up close, you don't see anything. It just looks like a bunch of dots. But when you back off from it, the image presents itself. So, uh, you know, trying to get it to look smooth like water but not blending it so much that you can't tell it was a wet on wet painting. Like that's kind of what makes it interesting is that when you look at it up close, you can tell that the colors are just swirled together. And I keep going back and forth between highlights and shadows, trying to get it to where I it feels right to me. Uh, there's going to be a moon in the upper right-hand corner. And so when I'm thinking about the highlights, um, like on her arm, for instance, the moon is shining and it is reflecting off the bottom part of her arm. It goes through the top and reflects off the bottom. So I'm trying to keep that in mind as I'm putting in these highlights and these shadows. Um, you know, again, it's, you know, it's, it's difficult to try to create something from your imagination. You know, working from a reference photo is easy for me if I'm just copying something. But for me, the real challenge is to try to create something that doesn't exist. It's in your head and uh, trying to remember how science works. <laughs> Light refraction, um, you know, just from your working knowledge of, of what you have seen, uh, studying um, pictures of water droplets, like to do those other paintings and looking at how the light behaves when it's passing through the water and where the shadows are created, where the highlights are. You know, this painting didn't turn out exactly as I'd hoped. But uh, for my first attempt at a person using fluid acrylics, but also a person made of water, <laughs> uh, overall, I was pretty happy with how it turned out. I am uh, reserving final judgment uh, until it's dry, because I don't know exactly how this is going to look when it's dry. It may look better. It may not. The darker parts, uh, that have the purple, it's just not really showing up on the camera. Um iPhones seem to have a difficult time with purple, I have noticed. Uh, taking pictures of flowers, I'll take a picture of a purple petunia and it comes out as blue as this painting. So, there is, there is something uh, with the processor on an iPhone that doesn't really allow it to pick that up very well. Oh, 
Okay. So it looks like I'm trying to make the water look a little more realistic. I can't see there. <laughs> the voiceover box covers half of the painting, so it makes it difficult for me to do this voiceover. Okay, more shadows. And highlights, just back and forth between shadows and highlights till it feels right. And as I mentioned, this took, uh, this was like probably like two hours and 40 minutes of, of me actually working on it. And it was starting to get pretty gummy at the end. I was definitely uh, pushing the limits of how much I could or how long I could manipulate this paint. You can see on the very edges it's already starting to dry. Sure do wish I could see what was happening. I guess I'm doing something down below. This is a flaw in the iMovie design. I, I can't tell you what I'm doing. Am I even doing anything? <laughs> Where is my hand? I see, I, I see that I'm moving, but I can't. Oh, okay. Here comes the moon. Okay. Laying in a little bit of cloud action. And then I'm trying to put in my moon and then I realize the perspective thing and I'm like, I'm going to wind up with an egg-shaped moon. And so eventually I cheat. I'm not ashamed to admit it. There we go. Grabbing a cup. <laughs> Give myself a round shape. So, uh, you know, with working on the wet on wet, it was a bit of a challenge to do the moon because I wanted to make clouds. And then when I was dragging through the moon, it's like, oh, the moon is changing shape because I'm pulling the edges of it. So I kind of had to go in there and straighten that out a little bit. And some reflection... And I think very soon after this is when my camera died because I did put in stronger highlights uh, under the moon. And I also put some highlights in the woman that were the same color as the moon because obviously it would be reflecting that color. So, okay, now I'm putting in a little bit of, of the purple color on the horizon to give it some definition so that you can see the difference between the water and the sky. No, I think I'm working on her arm there. I can't tell. <laughs> Looks like it. Yeah, so bringing in more highlights, I think. Wish I could see. Why do they design it like this? I don't understand. And then my reflection was a bit off center, so I wound up fixing that uh, when my camera dies right about now. Okay, here it is dry, except for this little spot. 
but you can see it has come out much darker than uh, when it's wet. It does dry much darker. And the purple did as I had hoped. It just got very, very dark. Black would have been too much, but that dioxazine purple blends very nicely with that thalo blue. And the moon has a nice glow to it. The reflection looks good. I do like the way she turned out. Let me try to get in there without that glare. You can see. I wanted her to have an expression uh, on her face where she kind of looked worried, a little sad. She's made of water. Her body is now made of 45% plastic. But uh, <laughs> I'm laughing because it's not funny. Anyway, the, uh, the sky turned out really cool. I just uh, love these colors. I love the, that part right there where she's coming out of the water. All in all, I am very pleased with how this turned out. For my first time trying to do uh, a person in fluid acrylics and also one who happens to just be made of water. So, uh, yeah, so this is where I brought in the extra highlights and I evened it out because it wasn't right underneath where the moon was, so I had to fix that. And I added a bit more highlights. Um, on the lady. So there it is. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you learned something. And uh, if you find this uh, useful or entertaining, uh, please do like and share and subscribe. Sharing is caring. Also, do check out the description box below for links to my PayPal tip jar if you feel so inclined. Uh, help me stay stocked up on supplies. Another great way to do that is by shopping through my Amazon link. If you enter through that link, anything that you purchase off the entire site of Amazon, I receive a small commission of at no additional cost to you. It doesn't have to be in my store. It could be anything. Lawnmowers, washing machines, you name it. Also in the description box is... My website, GinaDeLuca.net, where you can purchase my art and my music and my brand new CD, Better Than Chocolate, available for download. Also available for physical copies that I will sign and send to you. And last but most definitely not least, the link to our group, Go Make Some Art. Join us on Facebook. Post your masterpieces, ask your questions, get some inspiration. All right, you guys, that is it for me. I hope you have a beautiful day. Now go make some art.